At Microsoft Ignite, the march of the AI Copilot continued unabated. Microsoft tells us this is the age of the Copilot, but based on the comments I see here and content I've seen elsewhere, it seems like many of you feel like this is the age without the Copilot. I was hoping that Ignite's keynotes would give us some guidance on when Microsoft 365 Copilot, or now Copilot for Microsoft 365, would be coming to more people. No news on this, but a lot of other stuff. Some of it new, some of it repeated stuff that's previously been announced but still hasn't appeared, and some of it rebranding what's already existing. So in this video, I'm gonna break this down into three key themes that I think explain it best. First, Copilot works. Second, the future is more Copilots. And third, customization is key. But before we dig into that, Copilot again seems to have gone through a little bit of a rebrand with an aim of making it simpler. Bing Chat, Bing Chat Enterprise, and it seems Copilot in Windows have now kind of just got merged into the Copilot brand. So if you go to copilot.microsoft.com, you now just find a future experience where Copilot is the headline. As for Microsoft 365 Copilot, it now is Copilot for Microsoft 365, leading the way to us having a Copilot name for anything else under the Microsoft umbrella. It makes sense to make this less confusing, but if it achieves that, I'm not really sure. Microsoft is a company that tends to make things more complicated than they really need to be when understanding their different products. Only time will tell, or we might find their next event has yet another subtle rebrand. We are definitely seeing the outputs of Microsoft's developers in near real time this year, but I think we're also seeing the outputs of their marketers pretty real time too. One of the most important themes of the Ignite keynotes was that Copilot works. Microsoft is great at doing research that links to the efficacy of its products. I highly recommend that you go and check out their Work Lab website, which has some really interesting stuff that I've referred to here on the channel many times. In this case, they highlighted how 77% of Copilot for Microsoft 365 users wouldn't go back to life without it, how 70% feel more productive, 67% could focus more of their attention on important work, and 64% spend less of their time on email. These are impressive metrics for any tool, so particularly one that is a totally new concept and really still a product in testing in everything but name. These qualitative metrics were paired with quantitative data showing that Copilot users complete certain tasks nearly 30% faster and can catch up on missed meetings nearly four times as fast as someone not using Copilot. When justifying their $30 per user per month price tag for Copilot for Microsoft 365, these sorts of measures are going to be really important and ultimately will influence who buys Copilot and probably more importantly, who keeps it after their initial 12 month term expires. But instead of just relying on generic measures, Microsoft is also creating tools to help each business track their Copilot preparedness and its efficacy in adoption using a new Viva dashboard. The thing I found most interesting here was they highlighted the ability to track user metrics on a co-pilot versus non-co-pilot enabled basis, which very clearly is aimed at giving you data to expand the number of users in your organization who will eventually be licensed. Alongside this, there were also lots of references to the data security side of Copilot. This is something I've covered on the channel many times before, so I won't dwell too much on it. But the baseline is this. Those of you who are still shouting about Microsoft's AI being some inherently insecure technology that will lead to our destruction, you know who you are in the comments. You're wrong. If you choose to use Microsoft's commercial Copilot products, you are putting your data at no greater risk than when you chose to put it in Microsoft's cloud in the first place. Their data protection guarantees apply the same across their product stack. And if you're still not convinced, I recommend you go check out my recent video on how to get your Microsoft 365 data onto a Synology NAS. You're probably going to want a local copy so you can close down your M365 accounts. We're getting Copilot for service, Copilot with mixed reality, some extra add-on called SharePoint Premium, which confusingly for the rebrand isn't called Copilot for SharePoint, and you'll be able to create your own Copilots too. 
One of the big risks with Microsoft's AI strategy for us users is that instead of Copilot being a product that you add on in its own right, it's chopped up into lots of different add-ons where we end up not just adding $30 a user onto our subscription, but much more if we want any of the functionality from the various pots of capability. An olive branch that Microsoft extended in its announcements was clarifying something that made little sense. Teams Premium has had a bunch of AI features since before Copilot was around, a big one being Intelligent Recap, which gives you an AI recap of your recorded meetings. To get this feature, you needed Teams Premium at $10 per user per month, even though Copilot for Microsoft 365 adds AI features to Teams, including an ability to interact with AI in Teams meetings. Previously, Microsoft had stated that its roadmap was really to layer Copilot on top of Teams Premium, meaning you got one AI feature in Teams, plus lots of other stuff you might not need, and along with Copilot for Microsoft 365, you'd be paying $40 per user per month. Today, Microsoft straightened that out by announcing that Intelligent Recap will be included both in Teams Premium and in Copilot for Microsoft 365. If this is the approach Microsoft takes, then this might be good news. For example, perhaps Copilot for Sales users could benefit from some of the Copilot for Microsoft 365 features, but not others. A tailored set of add-ons that offer narrow, role-specific capabilities while also including relevant broader capabilities would make sense and make Copilot licensing feel a lot less like death by a thousand cuts. What do you think of this announcement? And do you think Microsoft will keep going in that direction? Let me know down in the comments. The inclusion of Copilot for the front line, which frankly looked more like an Iron Man movie in the videos they showed than something that's ready to go right now, is really exciting. This is a logical next frontier for AI, but comes with new challenges and risks. If you're looking to plan for AI adoption in your business, then a productivity-focused system like Copilot for Microsoft 365 is great. But in most businesses, not everyone is a knowledge worker powering through PowerPoint decks every day. There's a risk in focusing just there that we create haves and have-nots of AI, where frontline workers enjoy none of the benefits. In my new book, Who's in the Copilot Seat, I highlight this tension where productivity-focused AI only gets us so far and how even smaller businesses can start planning AI adoption that extends to the front line. But it seems Microsoft is about to make this even simpler. If you're interested in my approach and thoughts on this issue, there's a link below to check out the book. The likelihood is that in the long term, the highly specific but narrowly focused co-pilots like those that we will see for sales, for HR or finance, will be where the money is for Microsoft. This approach of both depth and breadth makes a lot of sense. And hopefully, if the Copilot AI layer we are now seeing through Copilot in Microsoft 365 becomes the new mouse and keyboard, it will become far cheaper as a consequence. Ultimately, the power of the Copilot tools is to do with accessing your data. I've said many times that Copilot isn't revolutionary AI, it's revolutionary data indexing to bring your context to the AI. It's also a revolutionary interface into apps you're already familiar with to be able to deliver from request to result with no intermediary steps you would need to take with a platform like ChatGPT. With some of this customization stuff, Microsoft is somewhat misleading. For example, we've seen the demonstration of Say It Like Me in Outlook at a couple of events now, where using your previous emails, Copilot will write content that sounds like you. Based on my own experience and on the currently live Copilot documentation, this seems to be a feature that hasn't made it to any users yet. I have to say that my big issue with these presentations by Microsoft is that they don't seem to fully understand the difference between using the present or the future tense in what they're talking about. They throw in the word can where the word should be will or might, leading to significant confusion about what is a live feature and what is planned. This is compounded by them occasionally being very explicit about when things will be released, like that Copilot Viva dashboard coming next month, which leads you to think that all their present and future tenses are consequently accurate. 
One thing that is available now is Copilot Studio, which is a cool way for us to customize our Copilot interactions by building new chat experiences connected to our data. Anyone already familiar with Power Virtual Agents will get a head start here, as Copilot Studio is actually Power Virtual Agents rebranded for the AI age, along with some additional features. Another little bit of cloak and dagger in the presentation delivery that leads to confusion potentially. I'm currently making a video about some of the new features that have recently come to ChatGPT. One is the ability to create your own GPT customized for your purposes. The Ignite presentation indicated that we'll be able to build these to customize Copilot, but this is coming soon. Overall, the issue of customization was highlighted a lot, both in terms of customizing how Copilot deals with your requests and customizing the systems and data it can talk to. It's good that Microsoft isn't reinventing the wheel here. Power Platform already has a robust set of tools for linking into any data sources, and there's a lot of people with skills in these tools. By leveraging these capabilities, even if they do feel the need to rename them, we can accelerate the path to customizing your co-pilots. Getting the best from AI and getting the best from the modern work tools available to you like Microsoft 365 requires a plan. It can be difficult to get your business on the road to digital transformation, but it can come with amazing rewards in terms of productivity and also customers who are more delighted in your products or services and team members who are happier to come to work every day. I've recently added some new service offerings on my website to allow you to connect with me to be your digital transformation coach, trainer or facilitator. So if you like what you see here and how I approach tech like Copilot and you're looking for help in your business, please go check out what's available. There's a link down below. Overall, the key thing I was looking for at these Ignite keynotes, a roadmap for broader availability of Copilot in Microsoft 365 wasn't there. However, there was a lot of interesting content which continues to convey Microsoft's ambitions for this technology. For those already using these tools, they clearly work. But to deliver on a mission statement for Copilot that reads, empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more, we need more access and less cost. The good news is that even if lots of these features are parts of inaccessible add-ons for your organization right now, they are impacting the general development of Microsoft 365 and bettering the general richness of integration across the platform and with other platforms. This remains the most solid foundation of technology to digitally transform your business, and Microsoft continues to be at the front of the pack in innovation. Using tools like Power Platform's AI Builder, you can get a head start on gaining benefit from AI in your business's unique processes, knowing all the while that when your Copilot licenses are available, that work will slot in with the lowest possible friction. Did Ignite's presentation ignite a new passion for Microsoft's AI technologies in you? Or did they ignite your hopes and dreams for Copilot in Microsoft 365 on November 1st when you couldn't buy it, and now your excitement has gone up in smoke? Let me know down in the comments and light up a heated discussion. It's good for getting people to see the video. Drop me a like while you're down there too. I hope this was useful, a little entertaining and a more efficient way of getting the headlines than watching the whole two hours of keynotes. Until the next video, bye bye.